you mentioned several times in this interview already, surgical assist MSE. Um, I know that one of the big risks with MSE is failure to split. I've spoken with several people who have had MSEs installed, but they got no split. Then they had to have the MSE removed and a second one put in, or they just gave up. I even talked to a guy once who had two MSEs in at the same time. I, I, never, I didn't see a photo of it, but he told me that his orthodontist, a naval, uh, a naval orthodontist, had two MSEs in at the same time, and he didn't get a split. So tell us about surgical installation of MSE. When is it appropriate? Does it solve the problem of failure to split? What other problems does it solve? How much does it cost? Uh, who's a candidate for it? Um, the floor is yours. Okay. So the surgical assist MSC is, I think it's one of the great thing happened to MSC. After the MSC happened, this is the great thing because we now routinely know that for females, no matter how old you are, we can split you. Okay. The worst scenario it would do quarter puncture. Quarter puncture meaning that we use a tiny little drill, drill along the mid pal to switch her. My guideline, yes, exactly. My guideline is I usually drill between 15 to 20 holes in between. Right that down this line split. from from here to here, 15 yeah. holes with uh, your dental 15 drill. 15 to 25 holes. Okay. For for male, I also do and from the front, between the front roots. Now those usually solve the problem for female. Okay. Now for male, it's a completely different story. For male, my my youngest patient that failed to expand without quarter puncture at 20 years old. So my, my protocol is if you're 20 and older as your male, I do quarter puncture. Okay. Now after quarter puncture, the oldest success patient I have is 48 years old. Okay. The youngest patient that failed quarter puncture is 27. I actually have 127 and 129 years old fail to expand after extensive quarter puncture. Okay, so those patients, so male, it's unknown. So send them what are called the surgical assist. So surgical assist, what my surgeon will do, it's a very surgeon specific. What he does is he do three splits for me. Okay, the number one will put it MSC in first. Okay, and then you put the MSE in. We put the MSE in, okay. and then what a surgeon would do is an in-office procedure, so it's not in the hospital. That's significantly lower the cost of the procedure, as you do a split between. From here, you crack the mid-palatal suture. Okay, the two other split is what they do. What they call the um, uh, nasal maxillo buttress, right here. If you have a skull, you can lift up and take a look. It's from the corner of the nose to the cheekbone right here. Sometimes he may extend it here. Now, extend it all the way back toward the molars? Not all the way to the back, halfway, possibly. Okay. But those details, when you have an interview, when you have a chance of interviewing Dr. Vong, he will go over details because I'm not a surgeon. So I'm just translating what he told me. But the the cut right here is not through and through cut. It's actually just superficial on the outside quarter bone layer. So the inside is all intact. So what he does is because this curvature right here, this buttress right here, create a lot of pressure preventing your max, uh, maxilla from expanding this way. So this too, on the outside, the curved part, he cut this. Inside's intact. So all of a sudden your bone become flexible like your teenager again. Okay, so you still get your cheekbone changes a little bit. You still get your um, increase in nasal volume because your whole maxilla is flexing. Mm -hmm. The procedure is simply make your maxilla flexible instead of stiff, not flexible. So let me get this straight. So you're saying that primarily what Dr. Vaughn would do is he would 
chisel right down this center mm -hmm. line between the roots of the front two teeth. And he mm -hmm. would split right there, right? Yes. So he would not cut here. The split would be from the front. And that, through, all the way down. But the split continues through. Yes. It's like splitting a log. Yes. Where you split it at uh -huh. one point, but it splits through and through to the bottom. Yes. And now you're also saying in conjunction with that, in many cases, he cuts the top layer mm -hmm. of bone in this area from the corner of the nose down into this area. And mm -hmm. you're saying there's multiple layers of bone here and he only cuts Usually one layer? Have a two cortical layer of bone, which is a thick side of bone. Outside, inside, insert, in, inner bone is more hollow, less dense, it's called a cancellous bone. So he cut the outside, the big, thick one that's curved around to prevent your maxilla from flexing. Right, so, so. The hard one, the inside one's intact. So when you expand, the inside bone will flex with it. I see. So okay. for, for a comparison with, with double jaw surgery, they would cut it all the way Completely through. Through and through, so you like a denture. Every layer and then this piece detaches like a denture. Yeah. That's but why with, you don't get the proper airway enhancement. Because this, because uh, the suture never splits. It just comes off intact as a denture. This piece stays yes. the same width. Yes, they could also split it, but in the same time, you don't get the flex of the uh, nasal cavity. I see, I now, see. The way he does it is once he creates split, he will start turning the MSC. Because it's already in. You put the MSC in before the surgery. Yes. So he will make sure you get a small diastema when you're leaving his office. If when he turn your MSC, he didn't see a split, he will continue to create more farther back cut until you get a small diastema. Then he called it quit. I see. So, so you're before you leave the office, you will already get a legitimate I asked him. Wow. Guaranteed split. Guaranteed split. Now, in my office, my MSC failure rate is 1%. This is some other office, majority of them fail. Because you have to have the various different protocol on how to treat patients. Remember again, I say MSC is just a tool. Just because you have the tool to fix European card doesn't mean that you know how to fix European card. Correct. That's a I have the tools, but I don't know how to fix them. Exactly. <laughs> so my protocol is you have to have proper guidelines for every gender and age. When that failed, second layer goes in. When option B failed, the quarter puncture failed, the third one goes in. Okay. Or I also have a policy, a, a protocol of if you're coming extremely narrow, then I will send you directly to surgical assist. Why do I do that? It's because if you're extremely narrow to start with, I can't afford to have you tip your TAD by yanking and cranking it and lose another two millimeter here, two millimeter there, just by losing those minutes. Now, most of my patients with the surgical assist, their TAD are pretty straight because the splits are easy. They're like a young kid. Of course. They're, they're the bone of a young kid. So a split very easy, so TAD stays straight, okay? So if you come in with super narrow jaw, I need all eight or 10 millimeter expansion I can get, okay? Then I will send you to, to surgery. Because you can't afford to lose any of that eight millimeters to distortion resulting from resistance. Exactly.